new figures, new zords, new villains. Oh my. What's up everybody? My name is Robbie, and you are watching Geek Levelation. Welcome back. If you're new to the channel, today we're going to be talking about Hasbro Pulse Fan First Friday, which happened at 11 a.m. today. Before we dive in, make sure that you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up with all of this Power Ranger and Super Sentai news. And also don't forget my Ultra Zord Funko Pop giveaway. At 5,000 subscribers, I will be giving this away, so you have to make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. So now diving in, the first few announcements weren't really announcements, they were more like the actual physical reveals of things that we learned from the last Fan First Friday. Because during the last Fan First Friday, we learned about the versus two packs, which was gonna be the A Squad versus B Squad Blue Ranger. So we got to see what those are gonna look like, what A and B Squad Blue are going to look like. And to be honest, they actually look pretty good. I think that the Sky head sculpt doesn't look too bad. It's definitely not the worst one I've ever seen because we absolutely all know what the worst one is. Then we got to take a look at the next versus two pack, which is Andros versus Astronema. Andros looks good. I mean, the, the Ranger body sculpts are pretty much all the same. They just have different paint jobs. Helmet looks good. Head sculpt looks pretty good. I do like the way that they did his hair. I think it probably came out the best that it was going to come out. In particular, though, the Astronomer sculpt looks awesome. And if I'm not mistaken, the only other female human-looking villain that we already got was the Rita Repulsa. And that wasn't particularly modeled after someone's face. I think they just put, like, evil queen face uh, for her. But I think Astronema looks super accurate, and I like what they, I, well, she has so many different, like, haircuts and colored hair in, uh, in the show, but I like the one that they chose. They were talking about coming out with different wigs. I don't know if they were actually talking about, like, human wigs or wigs for the, for the toy, but it would actually be pretty cool if we could get different, like, head caps. For her. All of these figures seem like they come with all of the necessary accessories, but we'll find that out once they come out. Hopefully they're not missing any, like my Rita Repulsa and Lord Zed uh, wedding two-pack that was missing hands. And if you want to check that video out, you can right over here. Or maybe it's over here? It's over here, somewhere. So next they revealed the Monsters of the Week, the two that we're getting, which again, we already heard about a little while ago, but they revealed the figures. The first one is King Sphinx. Now, I, I do want to take a second on the sculpt of this. I think his face looks a little bit too human. He doesn't really look like King Sphinx. King Sphinx kind of has like the almost, you know, like feline looking face. He's supposed to at least. He looks almost human with the way that they did his nose and mouth. So I'm not really digging that. I also think that he's maybe too light gray. I do like the articulation of the wings. I do like the articulation of the feet. That looks good. He also looks bulky, and I know that these villain toys are going to be tall because they're supposed to be larger than the Rangers themselves, so I think that's cool. But I just think the face just doesn't look like him. Now, I can understand why a human face wouldn't come out correct. Human faces are very hard to recreate, but something that was already a sculpted face, I can't imagine that being that hard to make if I, I mean, I'm not a toy maker, so I, maybe I, I shouldn't really, I shouldn't really judge, but when I think about like what other toys look exactly like costumed characters, I think they could have done a better job there. Now the next one is the one that I'm really looking forward to getting, which is Pumpkin Wrapper, and maybe part of that is because Halloween is very soon? Very soon, Halloween is tomorrow. By the time you're watching this, it might be today, or it might be yesterday. I think Pumpkin Wrapper as a sculpt looks awesome. I do wish that they painted in his eyes eyes and mouth. I don't know if the final figure will have those painted in black. Maybe they mentioned that. Maybe I missed that. Uh, but I think it looks like he's missing detail on the face. The thing that I'm really actually excited about are the, the little pumpkins that go on the putties and the and the rangers. I think that that's awesome. See now, to me, that's a good touch, right? That's something where it shows, okay, they watch the full episode. They see, you know, what's going on in the episode, what his attacks are. I like stuff like that. So now after this, they went over the Boom Studios comics, which I'm a little confused about, and I'll be the first one to say that I kind of fell off on the comics. After Shattered Grid and they went to Beyond the Grid, I really fell off, because I just did not care about the Solar Rangers, the team that they put together. It's not that I don't care about those characters, I just didn't care about the story. You know, I kind of picked it back up when we did Power Rangers vs. Turtles. I didn't read all of it, but basically since the original Boom Studios comic and Go Go Power Rangers have now both ended. They're coming out with two new series. I'll be honest, I don't think that I'm gonna pick those up. I'm most likely not, unless they're coming out with some really cool covers, like 
part of, I, I would say half or 80, maybe 90% of the reason why I collected the Boom Studios ones at all, for two reasons. One of them initially was just because I love the retro covers. I love the, you know, the Zack Footloose cover. I love the Goonies cover. I love the No Doubt cover. I love all of those. And then I started reading those more because I liked going after Mighty Morphin directly. So now around this point in the video, they did kind of like a look change and they went into Dino Fury. And if you've watched my videos before, you know I will be the first to say that Real Soldier was not as good as I was really hoping it to be. And we're going back to Dino real quick here in America. So now with that being said, they announced like the standard line of six inch figures. We got the main three, red, pink, and blue, and they gave them, now this is, so this is something that I, I don't love it when, when toy lines do this, but they gave them made up weapons. I don't know, I'm just the type of person, it's like I don't need made up weapons because they're not actually in the show. I was like that even when I was a little kid. Like I didn't like it when you bought a figure and it had all these accessories that just weren't real or weren't actually in the show, the story, the movie, whatever it was. I don't know, you may like that. Let me know in the comments, do you dig that type of stuff? Because I don't. So not only are they releasing the three original red, pink, and blue, but we're also getting a villain, Boom Tower, they're calling him. Which in Rio Soldier, he basically shoots bombs. Can you say bombs in a YouTube video? I don't know. So now what's interesting about these six inch figures is they come with a power key and the power key then goes to the new Dino Fury Morpher, which they do show. They show kind of like a prototype version of it. And it's the Hasbro version of the original Real Soul Changer that I did a video on. You could watch it by clicking above. It looks very much like the original Sentai toy. I'm sure that they did their own thing to it. It seems like it has its own sound effects that the Japanese version didn't have. The keys look a little... a little worse. They don't flip open like the Japanese ones do, but these evidently go straight into the new Zord, which I'll get to in a sec. But yeah, they definitely look like the more children's toy version of the Japanese key. Now this is something that I thought originally I wasn't gonna like, but I actually kind of dig it because it reminds me of old retro Ninja Turtles toys, where they're called battle attackers, and it also reminds me of like the old karate chop action Mighty Morphin figures where, yeah, I don't know how you make it happen, but they do like a, you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm doing like this like aerobic like sidekick. They do these little sidekicks so that, you know, some type of action they're doing. And again, not a toy that I would most likely buy, but for kids, those are definitely cool because I loved the karate chop and, and kick ones when I was a kid. So now here's something I totally wasn't expecting, and that's how the new Dino Fury Megazord looks. It looks great. And in Real Soldier, if you watched it, the Tyrannosaurus, red Tyrannosaurus looking mecha running around is Tiramigo. They're calling this Megazord the T-Rex Champion Zord. And it honestly looks really awesome. The pictures that they show, which you'll see right now, they look really detailed. Surprisingly really detailed. And what I like that they're doing, which I think they did with the Zeo Megazord, is they're giving them better articulation. So they're not just like literal boxy robots where their arms just kind of go in one direction. They are making them look kind of more like the suit actor in the in the suit. Uh, so I like that. I think that that looks really good. And then they show the rest of the Zords, like the combining Zords. I don't know what they're calling all of them, but you got like the, you know, Triceratopsy looking Zord with the gigantic sword. Um, I don't know what they call, he's like a, the, the one with the spikes. I forgot what they call him, but all of those Zords look super detailed. Actually, more detailed, maybe it's because they're all gray and I could see all the details and they're not like covered with paint, but they look more detailed than in some of like the, the show shots that I've seen. So then last, but certainly not least, they announced the two last Dino Fury Rangers, which again, if you're watching Real Soldier, those are brothers, the green and black ranger. So I don't know how these two characters are gonna be related in Dino Fury because they do come later and they are their own kind of thing. Kind of like an RPM, the black and green ranger come from outside of the dome. Right? So, so these two characters are going to somehow in the storyline be either related or they're like a duo compared to the original trio. And their actual names are escaping me. The Green Ranger will be played by Tessa Rao and the Black Ranger will be played by Chance Perez. And I really love how the Illuminati uh, prefaces their careers. Rao has previously starred opposite Willow Shields in the feature film Into the Rainbow. And some people may recognize Perez from the popular, now defunct, 
boy band in real life. Ouch, guys. Ouch. Shout out to the Illuminati, by the way. If you're not following them, you absolutely should. That was, so that was pretty much it for the Fan First Friday. And again, a lot of it wasn't new news. They were reveals of news that we already have, but they definitely showed us some new stuff, especially in relation to Dino Fury, which... Are you guys excited about it? Are you guys stoked that we have a new dino season? Or are you kind of like, we just got a dino season like a few years ago? How do you feel about that? Let me know in the comments. They did take a moment to recognize Jonathan Entwistle again for basically taking over the creative direction of Power Rangers and how they've now brought on Brian Edward Hill, the writer of Titans, to write the feature film, which will be live action and will be directed by Jonathan and Whistle. So what are you guys gonna buy? What are you gonna pick up? I might get the villains. I might get Pumpkin Rapper because I would really want Pumpkin Rapper. One of the things that they asked actually is what villains, what monsters of the week do you want? I've said this before in another video. Hasbro, missed opportunity here. Terror Toad. Terror Toad can come with so many cool accessories and do so many cool things. One of my favorite villains. It's the first episode I've ever seen. It also creeps me the heck out because uh, I have this weird fear of being eaten. But that's the, besides the point. Terror Toad. Make it happen. But that's it. If you like this video, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Again, I'm doing my uh, Funko Pop Ultra Zord giveaway at 5,000 subscribers. Also, you could follow me on social media. My Facebook still is not working. And oh, tomorrow or today or yesterday, whenever Halloween is compared to when you're watching this video i either hope you have a good time i hope you had a great time i hope you were safe and you didn't well maybe if you're going trick-or-treating just be safe you know we still got a social distance so be good be safe and may the power protect you happy halloween guys